Welcome back to my channel. Today's video. So I did my top 10 favorite drugstore slash affordable items. I did my top 10 mid-range items. And I am also working on my top 10 indie products because I wanna give those products their own category instead of putting them in here. Uh, I've done a video on my favorite Korean makeup but I kind of want to go back and do that again, but only pick my top 10. So today we are going to do high-end luxury makeup, my top 10 products. Uh, you're going to see a little bit of a pattern here. There are specific brands I typically buy for, from when I decide to go luxury or uh, high-end because I just know they work for me really well. I've always enjoyed them. There's a couple outliers, but for the most part, like. I know what I like in luxury and high end. And if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I wanna make sure I'm spending it on what I know and what I love in those areas. All right, so before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, whatever you can afford. And if you aren't a fan of my videos, um, I will see you on the way out. Bye. All right, so we're gonna get started on this list. I am so excited to show you. And my first product, which I didn't, uh, I bought, I got this on a whim. So it wasn't something that I knew I liked from the brand, but it was something I bought on a whim and have actually really enjoyed. And it's this Natasha Denona lipsticks. I specifically have the one from I Need a Nude Collection and it's the 36 MP Ambrosia. Oh, sorry, Amorosa. Uh, this is a bullet. It's like this pink color. Like there's the casing and then this is the color like a nice like muted beige color i'll swatch that for you i consider it like a mauvey beige i would say i think it looks good with like a pink lip liner in my opinion so that is one of my favorites right now uh sorry i'm getting the getting the makeup wipe out because I might I might be swatching a little bit today. Makeup wipe's gonna, I promise I'm trying to open makeup wipes so I can, there we go. So I can wipe off some of these swatches so you can see more of what these products look like. But the Amorosa lipstick is so smooth soft it is a matte lipstick i would say um not very satiny in my opinion but i think it's a good color i like the color range first off second off i enjoy how these feel on my lips because i don't think they feel very like icky on my lips like after a while you know after a while matte lipsticks are always gonna kind of like start to dry out your lips and things like that it works well under a lip gloss so I don't feel it like dissolving uh, on my lips as I wear it throughout the day because sometimes lip glosses will like eat your lipstick. And this one doesn't get me eaten up by uh, my lip glosses. I think it's a pretty color. Uh, I actually got it free during one of um, Natasha Denona's sales. I bought a like concealer from her and they got gave you a free lipstick. So look for those deals because sometimes those deals are the times I get to try things that I don't normally get to try. And this one was a good, was like a good try, like a good one because I think it's comfortable. I think it's very pigmented and it just looks beautiful on my lips because it's kind of like a, not like super dark, but it's a little darker on me at least. And it just is a really pretty nude. And I, like I said, I like to use it with like a pinker lip liner. I don't usually use it with a brown, but I just think it looks really nice on me. And like I said, they have a bunch of different colors. So I'd definitely check those out and see which color fits for you. But I don't think you'd be disappointed with the formula. They are $27 normally. Like I said, I got mine free. So if you were looking to get something on Natasha Denona's website and they have one of those sales where like if you buy like a certain amount of stuff, you get a free lipstick or you get something free, I would say that's the time, especially if you have something you want to buy. 
like don't don't just buy crap because you want to get the free something um just buy what you were wanting to buy and if it adds up get the free product like this is like a free full-size lipstick. I, I only had to buy a concealer and I got this for free, but it's a great free product. And I actually would buy more shades because like, I don't think this, uh, this color is definitely not my normal every go-to color, but it's a color I enjoy having in my collection and I like playing with, with my lip liners. So that I think makes it kind of special, but it's not just my normal like pinky nudes in my collection but it's definitely a nude for sure so definitely consider these uh if you're looking into luxury more like high-end stuff because i wouldn't consider natasha denona luxury but i definitely would consider them high-end because their stuff ain't cheap like not in the slightest so definitely consider my next product uh we're gonna start with lip products first because i got a lot of lip products to go through and then we'll go to like cheek and then complexion but this is one of my favorite lip glosses it's from pat mcgrath it's their lust lip glosses i have mine in alien Gelic, and i do have the blue one which is like blue flower or something like that but i like these they're definitely not a sticky formula i feel like they give like a beautiful glittery shine this is what the packaging look like it's very like sleek it doesn't feel cheap it doesn't have like a bunch of print on the side of it so it's very very elegant in my opinion and alien Gelic i like a lot because it's got like this only almost multi like duochromeness to it because it's got like this kind of gold glitter but it's also got this pink but it's like a clear base so those glitters really shine through i feel like her glosses are very impactful so if you're looking for something impactful, I would consider these. If you're looking for something a little bit, min bit more demure, these may not be your favorite, but I like that you can kind of see the glitter on your lips, but it's not like chunky glitter where you're gonna feel it and it's gonna feel gritty on your lips. It's got a great high shine and kind of glitter impact without making you uncomfortable. Cause it's definitely not sticky in my opinion. I don't think it's like, super watery but it's definitely a little bit but it's definitely not like a sticky like where you're gonna get little webs in your lips which is not good not great no one wants that but these uh these are some of my favorite glosses i don't buy them often because they are 29 dollars. that's a lot for a lip gloss and i have a lot of like affordable lip glosses uh, this is actually not even my most expensive lip gloss on this list but it's definitely one of my favorites and it's it's something I like to buy when it's, you know, like a, like a little treat for myself. It's definitely not an everyday purchase. Like these I have collected over the years. These are not like, oh, I just bought them all at the same time because they are expensive. They're not like cheap products. They are luxury high-end. Uh, I wouldn't consider Pat McGrath luxury, but I do consider her high-end because her stuff is pricey. Like her palettes are like a hundred something dollars a piece. Uh, like I said, her lip gloss is uh, $29. I do own two. One I did get while I was working at Sephora and I had a discount and this one, I don't know why I'm, I shouldn't be like, this is my hobby. And so this is how I like to spend my money. And it, it just kind of is what it is. Uh, I enjoy buying makeup and this was an enjoyable buy. I'm glad I bought it. I gl I'm glad I don't regret buying it because there is some high-end luxury stuff that I do regret buying. Uh, I need to make a video on that. Stuff I regret buying because I definitely have something on there that uh, is high-end that I regret buying so much. But I don't want to get rid of it because it is, it was expensive. I was not happy. But definitely these were not a regrettable purchase. So if you're looking for something like an everyday gloss that you know you're gonna use, but you want that high impact, impacity, impact, the high impact that like a gloss can give, Pat McGrath, especially if you want to treat yourself. Okay, this one, I do not condone spending the full $40 for. I definitely would get these on sale if you can get them because as much as I love this lip gloss, I do not think you need to pay $40 for it. 
And I think these are better than the lip oils they sell because those were really popular and I didn't think they were all that great. Apparently people loved them, uh, but I like these better. These are the D Dior uh, Lip Addict Maximizer Plumping Lip Gloss. I have mine in 010, which is holographic pink. This is what it looks like. It's very pretty, a little darker pink, like a little bit more hot pink than I would normally go for. And it definitely shows up like pink. That is pink. So you're definitely gonna get some color and pigmentation. There is a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of glitteriness to it. I like this because it's not super sticky. It does have a little bit of tack to it but it's nothing like super crazy. It comes in beautiful colors. I specifically love this one the most because uh, I do like a glitter formula, but they do come in non-glitter formulas if you do like more of an opaque, like non-glittery shiny gloss. They are plumping, but they're not painful plumping. They are icy plumping, which makes me very happy because I hate the painful plumping. If I'm gonna get a gloss, I want the non-painful plumping gloss. I want the icy, cool plumping. And I do see a difference in my lips when I wear this. It's not like a huge difference because I, I already have kind of like, not huge lips, but I do have like some volume to my lips. So with plumping stuff, I don't usually see like a huge difference in my lips because they are kind of already plump. And that might just be because I'm young or because that's just genetically what I was given, but I do see a tiny bit, just nothing huge. So don't don't take my word on whether it plumps or not, just because of how my lips are, and uh, I can't give like a full view on that. But it's a very pretty gloss. Uh, I do enjoy it. Get it on sale. Forty dollars is a little pricey for a lip gloss. I got it on sale, which is why I own it, and I don't regret having it in my collection but it's definitely something like you can wait to buy until like there's a sale or something. I don't think they sell out as fast as they used to sell out, which was like the big reason why everyone went for them. That's the reason I bought mine at the time I did because they were selling out and I got mine on a discount and now I have it in my collection and I won't let it go because it was $40. Um, I didn't pay the $40, but I don't want to spend, <laughs> I don't want to spend another $40. So this is going to stay in my collection until it is like dead, dead. It is no longer with them. But it's very pretty, sparkly, pink, up my alley. They do come in other colors. So if you're looking at these, definitely give these a go when they're on sale. So you're not spending an arm and a leg on a lip gloss. Like the Pat McGrath one was like almost $30. This is like $11 more. And uh, let's see, this comes with six milliliters. And how much does the Pat McGrath one? 45 milliliters. And it's more expensive. So like, think about that. My next one is another Pat McGrath product. Uh, I do really love Pat McGrath. She is one of my favorite. She is one of my favorite high-end brands. Uh, of all time. I love her products. I own a lot of her products, um, including like palettes, things like that. Uh, I do own a blush, but it didn't cut quite make the cut because they're fine, but they're not my favorite out of her collection. I forgot I had that face palette, but the face palette still wouldn't make it compared to the other stuff I picked out. Uh, but this is the Matte Trance uh, lipstick, and this one is in Vendetta. And she is so pretty. Oh, I've used so much of her. But she is this gorgeous red, like gorgeous red. Like, look at that. Like, it's not cool, t like it's not super cool toned. It's not super warm toned. Like, it's just that beautiful, like just, like it's almost like a snow white red. Uh, that's how my friend described it to me when she convinced me to buy it. Uh, because I was looking for like a red lipstick, like something that would go with my skin tone. And she was like, get Vendetta. That one's the one that's gonna be like best suited for your skin tone. You are going to look like Snow White in it. And she's not wrong. I look like Snow White. I don't usually wear a gloss with it because I think it moves a little, but I think it's comfortable enough to wear as 
a lipstick even though it is matte. It does eventually dry out the lips, but I think it stays like pretty solid on the lips for a while before, you know, that dryness sets in. But like I said, it's a very pretty color. The component is very pretty. It feels luxurious. It feels nice. I just love how these like look on my lips. Uh, after a while, they don't feel the greatest, but that's also after wearing it for like four or five hours. But I think these look so pretty and this color in particular is just stunning. You can wear it with a lip gloss. Uh, I would recommend something a little stickier and not very watery because I feel like it moves if it's a little too watery on the lips or maybe I've just been putting on too much gloss. But this lipstick is just one of my favorites. It's my go-to when I want to wear something red, especially something like stunningly because I have a few other reds, but when I want to like really go bam pow red, this is the color I wear because I think it just looks absolutely stunning comparatively to maybe some of my more brown reds or purple reds or things like that. This is the one that makes me feel like a princess, uh, especially the shade, but they do have other shades. They have a wide variety of shades. And this is just the one that like gets pulled out at parties. Like I love wearing these to like Christmas, this one to Christmas parties and just other like special events where I feel like a red lip. Like I don't want my focus to be the eyes. My focus is gonna be the lips. Oh. All right, we're gonna move from Pat for a second. And we're gonna go into Charlotte Tilbury. So I wanted to talk about Charlotte Tilbury's lip cheats. Uh, this one specifically is my favorite. I do have Pillow Talk, like the original Pillow Talk, but I feel like Pillow Talk Fair is actually a better color for me because I feel like it fits my skin tone a lot better. I can't wear super dark like lipsticks with it, but I feel like it goes really, like it's darker than my like pinky nudes. And I think it just works so well together. I think they're super pretty. And I feel like the lip cheat stays on really well. It's not moving around. It's not slipping and sliding. So you can get a blend with it, but I recommend like doing that first, like blending and like putting everything in its place first and then uh, and then putting on your lipstick. Cause if you're trying to like mash it together with the lipstick, I think it's gonna dry before then. That just means it's gonna stay on. So even when your lipstick is gone, this lip sheet's gonna kind of be there, which is nice because if the lipstick's gone, you can just put on a gloss or like a lip balm, like a nice lip balm and it'll be shiny and pretty and your lips will still be defined and lined. That rhymed. I'm proud of myself for that one. Didn't even think of that. But I think these are pretty. Now these are $25. I don't think they are the end all be all, but they are my favorite higher end lip liners that you can uh, buy, especially like the Pillow Talk ones. The Pillow Talk ones are my favorite. And I like that the Pillow Talk ones come in a variety of like, deepness so you don't just you're not do, like confined to either light or just regular pillow talk because i know those don't always work for like deeper complexions you can get them in like deeper and deeper complexions and that might be a good color for you but they do have other lip cheat colors i just prefer this one because i think it goes best with me but you can get it in a variety of different colors and I think you wouldn't be upset buying it. I'm just saying like $25 is expensive for a lip liner. I have talked about other more affordable lip liners on my channel, but if you're looking for that like a little bit of luxury, a little bit of high end, this one is, uh, is what I'd recommend. As you can see, there's a pattern. Um, I do like a lot of uh, makeup artist brands uh, so Pat, Natasha, Charlotte, those are all just some of my favorite like high end that are from makeup artists because I, I think they do really good products. I think makeup artists who go into making makeup, a lot of the brands I have tried have made very good makeup and these, these just prove it to me because I haven't had a lot from these brands that I have hated and that just makes me happy in my own right. Okay, the next one, we're gonna go back into luxury. 
Uh, you have seen this before, but this is the Dior uh, Backstage Face Palette. I have mine in 001 uh, Universal. I'm gonna swatch these real quick. Just get that on the back of my hand so you can kind of see what they look like. So it comes in three shades, this white color, this gold color, pink, and then a bronzy color. I can use three of these colors, but that bronze color, uh, I know everyone used the excuse of, oh, well, I'll just use it as an eyeshadow. I probably will never use that color because I don't use like bronzy shimmery colors on my eyes very often. That's just not a color I go for. Uh, if I'm gonna do nudes, it's gonna be pinks or like browns, but I very rarely go for like bronze looks. So it's probably not gonna get used, but the other three are stunning. I'm actually wearing the white one today. It doesn't emphasize texture. It's glowy, but it's not sparkly glittery. I think it is very demure, but very like pretty. Um, I actually gave this uh, to my boyfriend's mother and she likes it uh, because it doesn't emphasize texture. I just think it looks very pretty on the skin without not just being for my age, but it can also be for people who are more mature than me, who still want to enjoy highlighter, who still want that beaming glowy look without like emphasizing wrinkles or pores texture. Like I feel like gleamy highlighters are better in those cases because I feel like glitter does pick up on texture a little bit more than these like gleamy ones. So I, I think this is a great one. I use the white and the pink the most, but I do use the gold on occasion. Uh, I usually don't like gold highlighters because they're usually a little too deep for my skin. I'm just very pale, so finding gold highlighters is very hard for me. But this one isn't too deep for me. I appreciate that because I, like I said, every once in a while I wanna wear a gold highlighter, but I don't want it to be like a streak on my face it does blend very well without being just a stripe of gold on my face. And I don't think you'd be disappointed. The, my only issue with it is the packaging feels like a little cheap. Like I get it's for the backstage, the backstage collection. So they're made for like makeup artists, but I feel like the packaging is very plasticky. Uh, I have a lot of problem with Dior's packaging cause just cause I feel it feels cheap for what you're buying. Uh, even the lip gloss, I will say, kind of has like a cheaper packaging. But I think the formula is where it's at. I think when you buy Dior, you're buying the formula. You're not buying the, like, the packaging. The packaging is definitely not, not it. But the formula is what you need to focus on. That is where it's worth it. Um, it is $48 um, for four shadow, for four, not four shadows, four highlighters. So definitely consider that when you're thinking about buying the Dior palette. It's definitely not the most expensive luxury quad in my collection. Just think about it, because um, that is expensive. I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I do believe uh, these used to be sold out forever. And I don't think I got this one on sale. I think I like jumped the gun and bought one because I couldn't like, for the life of me, I could not get one and they were always out of stock and they always sold out really quickly. And I was able to get one on Sephora I had to like snatch it really quick, but I did manage to buy one and I do not regret my purchase, but if you can get it on sale with like a little money off, like $48 is a lot. Like if you could get it for 40, so like $10 a highlighter, $10. Uh, I've seen a lot of highlighters at like regular price for $10, I would, I would do that, especially if you're not gonna use one of the colors. Like I said, I don't use that bronze color at all because it's too dark. Like that is going to be a stripe on my face. But if you can, if you know you're gonna use most of the colors, I would recommend. Next, another highlighter I really enjoy. And this is for the girls who want, the girls and the guys who want a beaming highlighter, like something that's going to be wow, bam, pop. Like it is going to be blinding on your cheekbones. This is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter. This is what the packaging looks like. 
This is what mine looks like. They do come in an array of colors. This is like a white pinky color, but that is like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Why am I coming out with these phrases? But it is just blinding. Like it is a beautiful highlighter. It is beaming on the skin. Like it's gonna hit the light and blind everyone in the process. It's a smooth formula. It is going to emphasize a little texture because it's not a glowy one. It does have some sparkle in it. So do be careful of that, but it goes on very smooth. It highlights the cheekbones really well. I appreciate this in my collection for when I want something very like pop in your face or that inner corner highlight that is really just going to like wham, like wow, like wow everyone. This is the one I recommend. I think Pat McGrath does a lot of like very emphasized, big, like wow in your face makeup. This does not disappoint. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you want something like in your face, Pat McGrath, if you want something a little bit more demure, Dior, uh, if you want something in the middle, Natasha Denona and Charlotte, that would be, that would be my thought process there. Just in my opinion. Pat McGrath, I think, is one of those makeup artists that really wants to wow, like, wow you, throw it in your face, like, bam. I feel like Dior wants to give this air of, like, luxury, but nothing, like, too wow in your face. Like, you want to look expensive. And then Charlotte Tilbury and Natasha Denona are kind of in the middle, where you can get that bam wow, but you can also get that, like, more toned down look. Just depends on what you buy. Uh, my next one, uh, I don't think they sell these anymore, but they do sell like palettes like this one. They just don't sell this palette anymore. But it is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, you probably could tell it was Charlotte Tilbury because it says Pillow Talk. Uh, but this is what the palette looks like. Very pretty, heavy, all that good stuff. Has that like Charlotte Tilbury like instruction manual. And this is what the colors look like. So you have this like mauve brown color on top with a gold highlighter. You have this pink highlighter on the bottom and then you have like a brighter pink blush on the bottom. I think these blushes go on very pretty. They are definitely a buildable formula. So you're not gonna get high impact blushy effect unless you build that blush. I like a buildable girl. I don't always need like a ton of pigment at the beginning to, of my looks. Uh, sometimes I do like to build up my pigment because um, I do have some blushes and things like that that are very high intensity. And I know to dip my brush just a tiny bit in and then put it on and see where we are. But this one, you can kind of dig in a little bit more and get that overly blushy look. It's just, you're gonna have to go in a couple times, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, some days I don't want to like be wham bam blush. Like the blush I'm wearing today comes on very pigmented at first and then once you put powder on it, it definitely like softens. I'm wearing the Pokemon one today. Uh, it's their like creamy blush in a, like a cream blush in like one of those packaging. But this is just, uh, I think it's the blush is a beautiful formula though you are gonna have to dig in. See, Pillow Talk's almost the, phrase pillow talk's almost gone in that blush because I do enjoy that blush a little bit more than the pinker one but that's just because it's a little bit deeper pink than I usually go for but this brownie mauve is really where I like to like dig my brush in and then the highlighters I think the highlighters are beaming without let me show you the blush so see they're not very like bam in your face first swatch kind of deal so that's why I say you just need to build them up a little bit which is fine uh, the highlighters, I think, are a little bit more beaming without being like glittery. So there's a gold one and there's a pink one. I typically like to use the pink one a little bit more. Uh, the gold, I do like the gold because it does match my skin tone, which, which I've been saying for the past like few minutes as I've been recording that I don't enjoy like a gold that's not gonna mix with my skin tone, but this gold does mix with my skin tone. So it is one of the options I have for a gold highlighter. Um, it is the fair palette, so that might be why. Uh, they did have a deep palette, which had darker colors, 
but I feel like these colors go well with fair to light skin tones. Uh, the pink is what I reach for the most because I love a pink highlighter. Uh, I usually lean towards a white, pink, or beige. So something that mixes with my skin tone, just gleamy. Uh, I did consider the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter the single one because I do really love that one. I think it is overrated and I don't think enough people talk about it, but this one won out just because I think it comes with more colors. It comes with the blushes, which like, if you think about it, Charlotte Tilbury blushes are like 30, $40 and you get two of the, them in here and then you get two highlighter shades. The highlighters are about $40 and you get it for $75, which I think is a better deal because you get more colors, more highlighters, things like that. Uh, this is definitely not an impulse buy. I definitely don't impulse buy these, uh, but I do love their highlighter formula. Like I have a few of their highlighters. Uh, I do have the Pillow Talk highlighter, which is uh, something loved in my collection. It also didn't make it because it's a little newer in my collection, but this one I've had for a while and I've really enjoyed. It was a Valentine's Day gift, I think it was, from my boyfriend. And I was just so happy to have this in my collection. So $75, I forgot to tell you that the Pat McGrath uh, highlighter is 40. So it's not cheap. <laughs> I definitely recommend sales, 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 sales. Cause I, some of these I bought on sale and I'm glad I bought on sale. Some of these I did not buy on sale or on discount. And I probably should have bought them on sale or discount just cause it's a lot of money and I'm spending my own money. This channel does not make money. Uh, so I do have to spend my own money on a lot of this stuff or their gifts. Uh, boyfriend gifted me that one, but the rest I've bought with my own money. Like I'm looking at everything. Yeah, everything else was bought with my own money. Uh, that's just something to consider um, with this. Uh, okay, my next one. So this one is a new one, a newer one in my collection, but I fell in love with it immediately and I understand why people buy these every year. Uh, they usually come out with their big ones at Christmas time and I see why people buy them. I ha I've heard not every Christmas one has been great, but this one was great. This one was my favorite and I liked the customization of it. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palette. So I did get mine off the Hourglass website. I did not go to Sephora or Ulta to get it because I didn't want the jellyfish packaging. I wanted that owl packaging and the owl wasn't associated with like light, medium, dark. It was just a packaging you could pick. So I really enjoy the packaging of it. It's very heavy, it's metallic which I really appreciate because I think some luxury and high-end stuff don't come in the best packaging, but I feel like Hourglass has always had like this luxury packaging, like listen to that sound. And then this is, I like that these, a lot of these also came with mirrors. So this is what this palette looks like. So it comes with two setting powders, a highlighter, a bronzer, and the blushes. I don't use the bronzer very much because it is a little too warm. Like it's a little orangey in my opinion. Let me swatch these for you. But I love the blushes. Um, I think they are so pretty and compliment me so well. The highlighter is beaming without being glittery, which I think a lot of people appreciate. I'm not gonna swatch the powders because the powders are powders. Uh, but this is what it looks like. like see that bronzer is just a little too orange, but the blushes and the highlighter are super pretty because that highlighter is like a bronze, not a bronze color, but like a beigey color. So it mixes in with my skin very well. It's a glowy bl uh, highlighter, not a glittery highlighter. So it doesn't emphasize the textures as much. It also, let me find uh, the powders. I really like because they do set the face really well. They're very light on the skin. So they're not gonna get really cakey which is something I feel like a lot of people struggle with is the cakiness of some powders. I usually need a heavier powder, but I feel like I can get away with these powders in my, uh, on my face without it like going away really quickly. Like I don't find myself melting throughout the day when I use these powders. And then the blushes, the mauve and the pink are so pretty. I use at least six out of five out of six of these shades and 
I do not regret having this. I am going to use it in a friend's wedding. Uh, not the blushes, but possibly the highlighter or the setting powders. She's a little scared of setting powders, but I think she will really enjoy these just because they're very soft and we can just put it on the oily parts of her face or like at least the places where I know makeup will move the most, chin, nose, forehead. We don't have to set the whole face, but I think she'll really enjoy these powders because they're not gonna feel heavy and I don't think they're gonna make her makeup look powdery, which I think is a big worry is that her, she feels like her makeup's gonna look powdery. Now, I could not find the price for this because they don't sell them throughout the year. Uh, I tried to find the palettes, but could not find any because I know they did another one this year, but I think those are sold out. I think those were a limited edition. I don't think because these are limited edition uh, when they come out. I know I had to be on a wait list to get the exact one I wanted because they ran out of this casing, but they had the light like colors. And so I had to wait for the casing to come back in stock before I could do the uh, light colors. So this is definitely a product in my collection that I really love. Uh, I do not regret the purchase, but I couldn't find the actual price. So what I paid was about $96.50, so almost $100 for it. Definitely not cheap, uh, but if you're looking for a good face palette and you wanna spend a little bit of money, that one I recommend. My final item, the 10th item is, um, well, it's a complexion product, um, but it is my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I have it in 1CO Shell, which I think is one of the lightest shades, if not the lightest shade, uh, in the foundation range. I like this one because it doesn't get my skin too oily. Like, it holds up pretty well throughout the day. I'm actually wearing it today. I've worn it since, like, 9 o'clock this morning, and it's about 3 o'clock, and it still looks, like, pretty good on my skin right now. It's a little bit more full coverage, but you can get it to like a medium coverage uh, if you lose use just a little bit of it. I feel like it matches my skin tone really well. I feel like I don't look super oily throughout the day. Holds up well. I like this one, especially if I want to wear like makeup makeup. Not if I want to wear like, like no makeup makeup or I just want to wear a skin tint because it's like really heavy outside, it's icky outside. I don't wanna get sweaty and gross. This is the one I use because it is very like, a little bit thicker in consistency uh, than some of my skin tints because my skin tints are a little bit more liquidy. This is a little thicker, but I think it is one of the best foundations I have used on my face that has given me the look I've wanted with the coverage I wanted. Uh, and this one is $52 normally. I did get this on sale. Uh, Ulta was doing like their week of beauty thing, like their weeks of beauty thing, and they had it for like half off. So I bought it half off and I really enjoy it. I did have to go buy the pump because it does not come with a pump. So if you want the pump, it does cost extra. If you don't want the pump, just know that it's gonna come with a lid, but it's going to just be like an open, hole like this, like that. Hmm. Has an interesting smell too, like definitely like a foundation-y shade, a uh, foundation-y smell, but I think it covers great. I think it looks great after hours of wear. I'm not like looking at myself going like, ooh, I look greasy. It's not breaking apart anywhere. This is the foundation that like, if I know I'm going to an event, if I know I need it to hold up on me, this is the one that I use. Like this is what the bottle looks like. Whoa. This is what the bottle looks like. This holds up. Like I have not had an issue with it and I am glad I wore it today because I did actually have like a nice event to go to, uh, brunch. But this is the foundation I pull out when I know I need something that is going to look good and hold up. It, it, is, it is one of those foundations that I know I'm not gonna have a problem with and I don't have to play like any games with or have the fear that it's not gonna work the way I want it to and that like I'm gonna have like a makeup mishap. Like, that's my big fear uh, for that day. I wanna make sure my complexion stays. This is what I use. And that is all of my products. These are the top 10 that I enjoy in luxury or high-end price range. 
I try to get these on sale. I try to get them on discount. Anything I can do to not pay the full price, but I don't think you're gonna be disappointed paying the full price for these products. Maybe the Dior just because the packaging but I think the other packaging is pretty sturdy, pretty nice looking because with like luxury pricing and lux uh, and high end pricing, if the packaging is not measuring up to the like formula and you're charging me that much money, I'm not going to be happy. Like your packaging needs to be spot on as well as your formula, which is the issue I have with Dior. But I do like those products. Like they're not gonna be a bad waste of money formula wise. None of these are bad formula wise, but if you're looking to buy them, I would look for some kind of discount or savings or something like that. Just cause in my opinion, you can get great stuff at the drugstore and mid range as well. And I have a qualm with the, not oversaturation, the inflation, there we go. The inflation of makeup. I understand it's expensive. To, it can be expensive to make makeup, but only with certain formulas. And I get you have to make a profit, but like when it's that heavily inflated, I do have problems with it. Uh, doesn't mean I don't love to try them. Like I will still try them, buy stuff. Like I, I am the problem. The problem is me. But I think that we shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for good makeup when the drugstore knocks it out of the park a lot of the time. So keep that in mind. But if you are a luxury girly, if you are a high-end kind of person and you just wanna treat yourself to something nice, these are the products I recommend because I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with the quality of them. And you're not gonna feel like that little like luxury treat you gave yourself is going to be like a waste of money. Cause I understand you don't want to waste all your money on something that's not going to be good. If you're going to spend that kind of money, you want it to be worth your money. Thank y'all for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, join me on Instagram. My username is C-A-P-T underscore I-V-A-T-I-N-G underscore makeup captivating makeup with two underscores. That is where you can find me there. Uh, I post uh, little shorts there. I post on my story sometimes. I try to keep it a little interesting over there, but I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what luxury products you enjoy, what high-end products make you happy. I'd really love to know. I'm always looking for makeup suggestions. So thank y'all very much. And I hope y'all have a wonderful, Wonderful.